There are a number of options for developers to build their own blockchain solutions. Platforms that offer simple and intuitive tools to launch a blockchain in minutes. However, one of the more important questions has to be, why are you building a blockchain in the first place? And is this the best solution for you? Phantom is a project that's building a DAG-based development platform which promises to not only be intuitive, but scalable as well. It's also the coin that you guys, my community, voted on for me to review. So, in this video, I'm going to do just that. So be sure to stick around if you want my in-depth overview. Some quick disclaimers first. This is not investment advice, clearly. Please do your own research and use this only as an educational resource. And then, if you're new to the channel, my name is Guy and I do these videos regularly. You'll want to keep up to date with them, so I encourage you to hit up that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Okay, that's enough of the intros, let's get cracking. Let's start with a bit of an overview. Phantom is a newish project that has pretty lofty goals. They say they want to build a network of smart contracts intended to be used as the backbone for future smart cities. How do they plan to do this? Through the use of their DAG-based ledger. With this directed acyclic graph technology, also referred to as DAG, Phantom wants to provide a way to realistically offer infinite scalability. For anyone who follows most crypto projects, they will know that scalability is one of the biggest thorns in the side of most out there. A DAG-based ledger is fundamentally different from a blockchain and is often viewed as the most legitimate alternative. Other projects that use a DAG are the likes of Nano and IOTA with their Tangle. I've done separate videos on both, which I've linked to below. Anyways, Phantom is throwing around some pretty impressive stats for their ledger. They've stated a theoretical limit of up to 300,000 transactions per second. To put that into context, Bitcoin does about 8 transactions per second, Ethereum does about 15, and Visa handles about 2,000. I know what you're thinking, that's pretty punchy of Phantom, and you're right. Many projects throw around some insanely large numbers for their network goals. Practice is often different from theory, but at least they're aiming high. Anyways, with these theoretical throughput statistics, the number of use cases for the Phantom platform is immense. Any public or private network that needs a fast and scalable decentralized alternative can make use of Phantom's DAG-based platform. I'm talking education, healthcare, public utilities, and even home networks. Okay, this seems like some pretty ambitious goals. So, do they realistically have a chance of achieving them, or is it just hocus pocus? Well, let's start answering those questions by taking a look at how Phantom works. Phantom's protocol architecture is separated into three distinct layers. These layers have specific duties and responsibilities, all of which make the Phantom platform operate smoothly and efficiently. These layers are the Opera Core layer, the Opera Wear layer, and the Application layer. Let's start with the Opera Core layer. This is the bottom layer of the Phantom platform and is responsible for ensuring consensus with the nodes throughout the protocol. We'll talk more about consensus in a bit. The Opera Core layer also supervises and manages accounts that are part of the Phantom network, while also validating the authority of the nodes. Through the DAG, this layer confirms all transactions while the nodes take care of processing them. Each transaction confirmed on the platform is retained within the node, a similar behavior to what you might see with a blockchain. Even though Phantom's DAG technology doesn't require that all transactions be saved within the node, Phantom ensures that it happens anyway. This allows the node to create a verifiable file that shows the state of the ledger is legitimately in consensus. The open where layer is the middle layer of the Phantom protocol architecture. Responsibilities for the openware layer include issuing rewards and payments, managing smart contract scripts, and providing a functional programming language for developers. The top layer of the Phantom Protocol architecture is the Opera application layer. This layer stores the APIs accessible by the public. With access to these APIs, developers can give their decentralized apps, or dApps, 
a way to interact with the OperaWare layer. On the Phantom platform, when a smart contract or transaction is executed, a small piece of information is retained. This information, or story data, is what Phantom uses to keep track of past transactions. When would this type of functionality come in handy? I'm so glad you asked. Supply chains, for example, could use technology like this to track their entire processes from beginning to end. So if a healthcare company has a new fancy medicine that they need to release to the public, it could track shipments from the time of creation all the way to the moment it's sold to an individual. With Phantom Story data, the company would know where it had been, at what temperature it was stored, and whether or not it had been tampered with. I don't know about you, but I like knowing that no one has messed with my medicine beforehand. So, now we have an idea how the technology stack works, but what about the Phantom Consensus Protocol? Phantom's core consensus protocol is an asynchronous Byzantine fault-tolerant algorithm, also known as an ABFT. The project calls this their Lachesis ABFT. This type of algorithm is based on a principle referred to as a gossip protocol. The exact mechanics of the gossip protocol are beyond the scope of this video, but you can basically think of it as a virus. No, not that one. A good type. Anyways, data propagates through the system node by node like a virus. Eventually, this will reach every node in the phantom network. It's a very effective way for the global map of the network from limited local interactions with nearby nodes. This is unlike a blockchain that requires all blocks to be propagated sequentially. All nodes have to agree on the state of the ledger at every point. So, a distributed ledger built on top of this type of consensus method provides high levels of security, low time to finality, and high transaction throughputs. To make things as easy as possible when designing distributed ledgers specifically for their users, Phantom developed its ABFT to be flexible and compatible with already existing code bases like Go Ethereum or Cosmos' software development kit. Part of the Phantom consensus algorithm is its TX flow protocol used for its transaction responsiveness. This protocol is built to run alongside the ABFT consensus where users submit transactions while getting real-time confirmations. Now, I know these concepts may be a bit hard to wrap your head around, so I encourage you to take a look at the white paper which I've linked to below. If something is still not clear, then I'd be very happy to answer your questions in the comments. One last thing I want to touch on briefly is Phantom's virtual machines. Phantom argues that current virtual machines are inefficient, cost too much, and aren't optimized to run well on decentralized platforms. Additionally, with a virtual machine, users cannot parallelize execution, which means nodes have to execute in their current state to create the same state results. This is something that Ethereum 2.0 is actually trying to achieve with their shard chains. And if you want my take on it, then you can watch my video right here. Anyways, Phantom is trying to develop a virtual machine with better security that aims to provide external code linking, scalability, and a well-defined library. Additionally, Phantom virtual machines offer the core functionality needed to create a well-established DAP ecosystem for its users. Let's switch gears for a bit and talk about the Phantom Coin FTM. There is a total supply of just over 3 billion FTM, with a little under 2 billion currently in circulation. Phantom intends to use an inflationary model to expand its current ecosystem, with the coins primarily used for reward purposes on the platform. The white paper states that there will be an initial inflation rate of 5% that will decrease as users become part of the Phantom network. 20% of that inflation will be used to provide rewards to nodes, while the rest will incentivize other users contributing to the growth and development of the platform. FTM will also be used to promote the Phantom project, creating incentives for marketing, recruitment, employees, new project, and overall project growth. Additionally, FTM is used for staking on the Phantom network. Phantom has designated a good amount of its pool to stakers in an effort to grow the network while also increasing its security. The rewards pool set aside by Phantom is shared by all stakers. That means the more FTM that staked, the lower the reward as a result of dilution. If you are going to be staking on Phantom, then there are two ways that you can do it. 
You can either run a validator node or you can delegate your FTM to the said nodes. In order to run a validator node, you will need a minimum of just over 3 million FTM to stake. Pretty punchy. So perhaps the best alternative for most crypto users is to delegate FTM to be staked. I've linked to some handy resources below that will show you how to do this with their core wallet. Anyways, at current levels of staking, just under 50%, you have a staking return of 47%. This could fall to a minimum of 26% should 100% of the FTM be staked on the network. Even in that case, it's a pretty damn high staking return if we were to compare it to most of the other staking coins on the market. Of course, it's important to note that staking coins still exposes you to price fluctuations. A 50% fall in the price of FTM could eliminate all potential yearly staking gains. Is this likely to happen? Probably not, but the coin is a volatile one. Prices have been on a slight downward trend recently. All I'm trying to say is that staking does come with capital risk, so make sure you only stake coins you believe in. Anyways, let's move on and take a look at the broader Phantom Foundation, shall we? There seems to be a pretty large team over at the foundation. They have diverse backgrounds, including business development, architecture, software engineering, cryptography, and finance. Additionally, Phantom has a strong advisory board, which consists of the president of the Korean Blockchain Association and the COO of Digital Currency Holdings. On the partner front, Phantom has listed at least two in their white paper. One of these is the Korea Food Tech Association, and the other is the Oracle Corporation. I couldn't really find anything online about Oracle partnerships, so it would be great if they broke this down more in one of their blog posts or something. Anyways, when it comes to investors, you also have a pretty large list of VC crypto funds that are backing the project. You can see the whole list here. So if you choose to hodl FTM, you know that you'll be in good company. Let's dive into what Phantom has in store for us in 2020 and beyond. As we know, Phantom launched its mainnet in December of 2019, and the team is building out functionality on top of it. Just recently, Phantom announced the release of their Phantom DeFi suite. This is called Phantom.Finance, and will include two primary components, FLEND and FTRADE. Fun fact, this will also be the very first DeFi product launched on an ABFT consensus. I won't go into all the details here, but if you want my take on the DeFi space, there is a video for that. In addition to adding a DeFi solution, Phantom also wants to give its Lachesis consensus Tendermint-like capabilities. This includes expanding on its ability to interact with different blockchains, as well as developing compatibility with various technologies. The project also plans to use its network speed to address and solve real-world issues. What might that look like? Well, for starters, Phantom could use data gathered on its network to provide solutions to problems that already exist in industries like record keeping and supply chain management. We briefly touched on this type of opportunity earlier. Phantom also wants to improve its consensus engine. It plans on doing this by integrating already existing cutting edge technologies into its fast and scalable ABFT consensus mechanism. The goal for the project is to take several significant steps forward before the year is out. But not everything Phantom is focusing on involves improving hardware and software. The project also wants to expand its business development department. This includes focusing on real-world opportunities for its technology. It also plans on driving adoption for its platform, which is something many projects fail to do and instead focus more on the technology aspect. Now, moving on, I want to take a quick look at the markets for Phantom. FTM is listed on a number of exchanges, however, the bulk of the trading appears to be taking place on Binance and Chainex. The latter is a large Korean won market, which makes sense given that the project is based there. I want to dive into Binance's Bitcoin Phantom order book to get a sense of the liquidity for the coin. As you can see here, there appears to be pretty deep order books, although the bid ask spread is pretty wide. Having said that, you won't have too many problems when it comes to large block execution oodles of liquidity in those buy-sell walls. When it comes to storage of FTM, the choice is a bit limited. Your best bet is to perhaps use Phantom's core wallet. It's offered in both a mobile and desktop version. You can download the wallet from the Phantom site for both Windows and Mac OS. It is then also available on the iTunes Store and the Google Play Store, should you wish to download the mobile version. Unfortunately, at this time, it looks as if there is no hardware wallet support. 
So if you're going to be using the Phantom Wallet, be sure to back up your seeds and keep your machine virus clear. No, come on now. Yes, that one. I want to conclude this video with a few of my final thoughts on the project. Firstly, I'm a fan of their DAG-based architecture. Scaling is a big concern for blockchains these days, yet too many projects are trying to optimize a blockchain instead of starting afresh with a different data structure entirely. Is Phantom's DAG likely to reign supreme? I can't tell you that for sure, but their unique approach to consensus is something that could give it a scalability and transaction throughput edge. While I think their 300k TPS number is a bit ambitious, if they even achieve a tenth of that, it will provide an immense number of use cases. I also like the fact that they've built a token economic model that encourages participation. Through a carefully thought out inflationary model, Phantom is trying to ensure shared network growth. And if you are a staker in search of that yield, the current rates on FTM staking are super attractive. When delegating your coins, you can start staking at one FTM. Compare this to some of the masternode coins that have a minimum staking requirement in the thousands of dollars. Now, having said all this, I have to be realistic. Phantom is still a long way away from achieving the adoption statistics that make it worthy of its lofty ambitions. It only just launched its mainnet a few months ago, and there is a lot that needs to be done before other developers will actively start embracing it. Moreover, while DAG-based ledgers are thought to be much more scalable than blockchains, the jury is still out on their security and robustness. This is something that some of those other DAG projects have had to confront. I'd also like to see more exchange and wallet support for FTM. The former would open up more liquidity in the markets, and the latter would make more people comfortable hodling Phantom. Either way, this is an exciting project, and I'm glad you guys suggested it. I'll be following it closely this year. And that, guys, is my review of Phantom. Now, as always, I do need some feedback. What are your views on the project? And any questions for me? Hit me up below. Also, I would love your support. If you found this vaguely helpful, then hit up that like button and don't forget to subscribe. My next video will be with you very soon. I hope you enjoyed that video. But if I must be honest, I couldn't fit everything into it. There is so much more that I want to share. This is exactly why I started my weekly newsletter. It's your personal window onto my crypto world. I share everything from market analysis, reviews, news, and other juicy tidbits. Sound of interest? Groovy. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. There's a simple sign up form that I've linked to in the description below. Ping over your email and hit submit. You may be just in time for my next email, which includes a juicy coin tip.